Well, that bullshit. Oh shit. Oh, did you bring that in? Or? No. Terrible. Who brought that in? That was shit, Jerry. Oh, fuck you. Fresh from nabbing the award for most misleading title from the film Drive, Canadian alt-pop outfit Destroyer bring us their new record, Poison Season. Zach, what did you think the film Drive was about? It feels kind of a bit like more Destroyer. I mean, it's, he's much more lyrical and poetic, but mm. I mean, just like sonically, it's a lot of like the horns and the kind of like uplifting. Um, it's busy. It's there's a lot going yeah, on. Yeah, violins, lushness, but um, there's no hooks. It's certainly a bit of a departure. Like Destroyer jump around a bit in terms of style. You know, I listened to their old record Thief the other day, and it was much more stripped back. And Beja's vocals are, are like, you know, they're they're a bit nicer because they're more. It's more of a melodic focus. You know, it's not just about having sophisticated sounds to give the impression of melody. What's good about this record is that it kind of jumps around a bit, like there's kind of soft ones and loud ones, and then there's a violin number, and then there's a flute number. But he doesn't jump around. But he, no, His he, vocals that are as subdued as always. Yeah, he's doing the same thing over every track. I think at the end of the day, this music's not particularly like musically exciting, but it's very musically competent. And that the amount that you like this record is com completely going to be based on how much you buy into his cult of personality and how interesting you find him. I'll give it three zacks. I'll even give it half a go. I guess you can't really give it a bad score because it is so well put together. So I'm going to give it the same. Three zacks, half a gotchi. For years now, people have wondered who inspired the song Angie by the Rolling Stones. Well. I don't have the answer, but I can tell you that Wild Horses was written about Sydney-based singer-songwriter Angie, and she has her new album, Free Agent. Zach, you're a free agent. Did you relate? No, I didn't to relate to this album, mm. uh, because it's quite fuzzed out, a lot of mm. it, and so it's hard to hear what she's singing about. But that's not a criticism of this record. I actually really quite like this record. It's a 25-minute record, which is really Shit. nice and short. Yeah. Uh, and it's, and it's better for it, and it's just kind of really like stripped back, like fuzzed out rock and roll. She's got a knack for um, hooks. It's a very unpretentious affair. I mean, vocally, she's very, very punky. But I think like a lot of the instrumentation sort of reminded me a little bit of the rockier numbers on Angel Olsen's album last year. You mm. know, that really nice, tasteful fuzz. I actually really like the first and last track on the album. Which are the kind of more ambient piano Yeah, numbers. that kind of worked better for me, I think, when it really sort of, I guess, uh, foregrounded her vocals. Mm, quite psychedelic for how kind of pulled back it is yeah. and for how little is going on, just that kind of natural reverb. I think this is a really nice record. <laughs> three zacks and half a gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. gotcha. Mm. And that's three zacks from me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bigfoot, the Loch Ness Monster, Pink Robots, Miley Cyrus. Are any of these things real? Is anything ever really real, man? These are the big questions Bigfoot asks on her new record, Miley Cyrus and Her Dead Pets. Matt, do you realise? No, and I don't think Miley realises either that this is a terrible album. <laughs> uh, but the idea that you know Miley got together with Wayne Coyne from the Flaming Lips and they collaborated... All the Flaming Lips, I think. All the, all the Flaming yeah. Lips, of course. You know, they've created this new friendship. It's a very mutually beneficial relationship that yeah. they clearly have where Wayne is kind of trying to establish himself in the pop canon and Miley is trying to kind of show that she's got some street cred or can kind of knock out an indie release. I mean, the word that's being thrown around correctly about this record everywhere is indulgent. It's almost an hour and 40 minutes. I mean, I've listened to it three, four times now and it is like really hell. I mean, it's boring as fuck. For me, this record fails on every count because it fails as like a, all really seeing who Miley really is. Like mm. she just sounds like the flaming lips, but not as good. And every single song is either about like how much she likes smoking pot, like ridiculous acid fried, like, wow, are the clouds really white? Like, ooh. Mm. Or like people that she's like fucking or wants to fuck. And the only saving factor of it is that Dave Friedman, who engineered it, who's kind of the king of psych pop engineering, who made Tame Impala within a speaker, you know, he does a lot of the production on this. Yeah. Um, so sometimes the production's great. But a lot of the time it's frequently sort of overwrought. It's just like these babbling, whirling synths to make it feel all spacey. In the middle, there's kind of like this decent run 
of these three tracks, three tracks that she did with the Flaming Lips. They kind of have like, you know, that really Bit solid Flaming Lips groove. Yeah, yeah nice another one. fat riff or something like that. Yeah. Um, and I didn't mind them. Good on her for doing it and maybe the next one will be better. But I mean, this record sucked. I'm going to give it a Zach and I'm going to give it a half a gotcha. Zach. Gotcha. And I'm going to give it a Zach. Zach. Thanks for joining us on At The Music. Now we've all heard of rap stars, but have we heard of rat stars? <laughs> Next week, Matt Rim's a rat on At The Music. Rat stars.